Okay, cool. Looks like it's going. So, so audio as well. I'm sorry. Say that again. That record your audio as well. Yes. Yeah, it'll record the audio. Good. Yeah. So, um, so I, while we were while you guys were connecting, I did add uh, Paula, you, Melissa, and Todd and Jeremy to the system admin group and I'll show you what that group looks like as part of the training. Um, so if you do want to add somebody else and you certainly can. Okay. Um, when you log in next time you should have an admin tools section over on the left hand side. And if you click this plus sign to expand it you'll see a couple of different options here. You'll have the organization section you'll have the monitoring section and so we'll just kind of work from the top down. These two, um, Jeremy, I think you have access to but uh, basically the admin monitor is pretty straightforward. It just kind of tells you if there's any problems like our email task issue which we resolved. <laughs> uh, but starting just from the top down, um, the manage job functions, if you click on this, there's a few job functions that we've created. Um, the first one is the system admins. This is what gives you guys the ability to manage the, uh, the process instances, which you'll see here in a second. So you guys can see you four are in there as well as uh, my account, the admin account. Okay. So if you want to add somebody else to it, you just select them and you click the button here and that moves them over into the assigned users group and then they would be able to do the same functions that uh, that you guys will be able to do. Okay. Okay. Uh, in addition to that, there are a number of other ones here you can see. So um, the, the AP Montana and Washington group are specifically for you know, the AP step and the, the Washington AP steps. The controller one, of course, is for you, uh, Paula. The um, KHQ managers puts that user in the list of managers that you can select to route it to. Can we look, uh, look at that real quick right now? Yes. So, yeah, so if I click on this, then it'll bring in, and basically there's just this users tab um, that you click on and this gives you the list of those people that are assigned in there. Okay, there's one JP paid. Can you, he doesn't look like he's set up. And this is supposed to be KHQ managers? Correct. Okay, it looks like everybody's in there. So we've got Montana in there as well. So there is a distinction between KHQ managers and like Montana managers, right? Or are they all? When we reroute, we see everybody. Okay. Right. So we're we're not really distinguishing that here, other than uh, this puts them in the list so that you can select them as a manager to route it to at that first step. Okay. 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 Um, so if we need to add anybody, uh, Jeremy, this is just pulling from, uh, I think, the Active Directory group, so we can just add them to that, and they should automatically synchronize across. Is, the doc, is that the DocuWare group? Yes. Okay. So J.P. Hayde was supposed to be set up, and he's yeah, not. I put him in that group. So I'll double-check to make sure he's in the right group. Okay. How often does this pull? Okay. Often does uh, I think a... right now it's just once a day, so I can run it more frequently. I think it runs at midnight or something is the default. Okay. Is there a manual way to do that? Hey, pull now. Yeah, so if you come in here to configuration, there is um, this LDAP Active Directory configuration, and you can... Uh, just manually run the synchronization right now and it'll do that. 
Oh, okay. So you check that box, hit save. And it runs it, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, but uh, I can, I can, I'll run it when we're done here. And, and, uh, I, well, it looks like you're on a four-hour interval. So if it does. I, yeah, I'll, I'll double check to make sure he's in the right group. Okay. Okay. And if uh, if it looks like he is, then we can work backwards. But um, but anyway, as as managers change, this is going to be important for you guys to know because. Um, well, for, first thing is as managers change. So if they need to appear in that list, so you can route them to them. You just add that user, you know, tell Jeremy to put them into that document group, and then you come in here and you just add that user into the assigned users group, um, you know, just push them over, and they'll show up in that list and, and be available to route invoices to them. Okay. But this is also helpful to know because if you go on vacation or someone goes on vacation and you want someone to be their backup, you can very easily add them to that other job function. So I'll use the controller example here. Um, you know, it, it, let's just say, um, I think this scenario came up before, but like, Paula, you're out of the office and you want um, Todd to approve for you. You just push Todd into that group and then save it, and then um, he can, he'll get notifications and and he'll he'll fit into that or or be part of that controller role. Okay. And we haven't had a chance to test that out. So if he if we put him in that controller role, mm -hmm. do they still come to me and they go to Todd or Correct. because the deal is once that once I approve it it automatically goes into the um uh, CSV file, but so if there's two people assigned to that, what if, if it comes to me and I'm gone, what if I do it when I'm gone, but they need to push it through, and so Todd pushes it through, is it going to go twice? I mean, I guess I'm a no. little confused on that. No, no, it's going to send out a notification to both of you, but whoever does it first, that's going to that's going to move it to the next step. So if, for example, Paula you know, it, you, we put Todd in this group and you get an email and he gets the email, but you click on it and you submit, approve it and submit it first. If Todd tries to do it, it's already going to be gone. So if you prefer to do it where, um, you know, while you're gone, Paula, you don't get those notifications, then you could take, you know, we could have you take yourself out and put Todd in. Uh, but it will not create duplicates, so it'll send it out to both of you. But whoever gets to it first, that's gonna that's gonna move it along. So when I get back, I can't go out and approve invoices. Look well, at they've already been approved. We'll have already been. I know, but then I never see those invoices. So we were talking about. There was right. some way to go back and look at it or something to that effect. But well, you, you can go back and look at it. So th that would be possible, but um, they would have already been approved. So you'd be able to go back and see what had been approved since you were gone. That's definitely possible, but they will have already been moved on to the CSV file and so on. Okay. Because you could filter for that time frame and yeah. see what all was approved. Yes. And then look at, see what I wanted to look at or whatever. Yeah, exactly. After the fact, so I could maybe go and attach a PO or an email that says I looked at this or something like that if I wanted to, or I guess it really doesn't mm -hmm. matter. But okay. 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 So you guys can play around with that and kind of determine what works best for you, but um, hopefully that makes sense as far as how it behaves. What if we, the presidential, the administrative review, and put you into that group? If we do that, and then you could go in and because isn't that supposed to be part of a process? We could do that. Right. We could do something like that. Doesn't help hold up the approval of it, but you can still view it. Right. Yeah, if you're doing it as a controller. Yeah. Because then we could use. Yeah, we could do that. Okay. Well, okay. we'll yeah, we just need to play around with yeah. a little bit of stuff too. Once we yeah, yeah. know yeah. all this, um, I think that. Okay. And then so, like we, you can see here, oh, go ahead. Up, and can we go in and clean some of these up? Because we've had so much turnover. There's a lot of these that. Okay, that's a good question. So, if I take them out of the uh, doc, the 
AD group, will they just automatically disappear once it does the same? No, it, it blocks the account, but it doesn't delete it. Um, so the and the reason it does that is in case there's accidentally an active instance that's out there uh, assigned to a user. So it, it blocks the account, but it doesn't do automatic deletion of that account in Job Router. Um, so I'll show you here in a second how you can manage the users. Okay. Yeah. And it's broken down uh, by AP managers, pre uh, president, controller, um, and then the two station accountants. Now, the thing that uh, I just want to mention quickly is that the, there's a station accountant role and an AP, and then they're broken down into Montana and Washington. So if you look here, um, you'll see that uh, there is, you do need to put um, the the people into you know the station accountant role so like Todd and Melissa you guys are both in the station accountant role but then each of you individually is in the each uh, these roles here um, so um, Montana versus uh, Washington and the reason I did that is so that these process inboxes would work so it's it, it's just an extra step there but um, and I think I ended up putting you I guess it looks like I put you guys in both anyway because you wanted to see each other's anyway so. Um, but you do need to be basically definitely in this one, and then if you ever want to divvy it up between Montana and Washington, um, then you just put them in there. So it, it it's not a duplicate. It, it is a part of the uh, the, the process there. So the, just for station account and AP, those users are, you, you know, you guys are in both um, the station account group as well as in the, the ones that are broken apart by state. And the managers group, would it be possible to have a separate KHQ managers versus uh, Washington versus Montana managers? Because there are very distinct managers, and so you've got this big long list that you're looking through. I mean, and Washington is only 99, 95% of the time going to approve Washington, and Montana is only going to approve Wa Montana. Right. Thing. Over, but, oh, yeah, there's a couple that would cross over, but not really. Um, but, so so um, you would want to maintain two separate groups, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay, and then it would filter based on what state was selected? Is that kind of the idea? Yeah. Yes. Okay, let me look into what's involved there. I, I haven't done that before, so let me see if uh, I can find out how to do that. I mean, it would just give, yeah, the Washington just a list of people that we've, our Washington people. It just counts, I mean, it just would make it a lot slicker for them having to go through and pick out the people that they're selecting because right now you have to go through a list of, say, you know, 15, whereas, like right now, Montana only has three managers, really, except for us included, and Washington has a lot. And as we right. add, there's it just, it's just that much harder for them to go through and pick that. It just takes that much more time. Okay. But, I mean, so, I, yeah. it's yeah. trying to refine some of this stuff. I mean, I don't... We can live with it, but it, it's just... It would be it would be, it'd be really nice to not have that big. Okay, so I'll, I'll look into that for sure. Excellent. So then, um, so that's the job function. So again, you can add people in the system admin. All that is is the the four of you guys again uh, for that for this these uh, functions that we're talking about. Then if you go to manage users, um, that is again of course a list of all the users, and there is a filter for that as well, which you can see here. And if it's you know if it's if it's collapsed, you just click on it here. Um, I think everybody fits on one page here, so it's not too bad, and you can sort these alphabetically. Um, but if somebody gets um, disabled in AD, they should get blocked in um, 
in Job Router as well. And so if you come in here and you do want to, for example, manually delete somebody, you can just very simply select their account and click the delete button. Okay. Um, or if you want to add some, or, or, or for example, if you want to reset someone's password. So like uh, we set up those uh, passwords for now for uh, Tom so that he can log in. You can click on the user there. And on the security tab here, we can um, set up, define a password for them. So you can type in a password and then you can have it even um, prompt them for a new password when they first log in. Um, hopefully that'll go away, but uh, if we if you need to reset a password for Tom, for example, or something, you can do that. And that's set up for the three Montana station accountants because they are managers because they're, so if we set up additional Montana managers will have to set them up that way as well. Right, and hopefully that's a, that'll just be a temporary thing and, and uh, we'll get that figured out. But uh, in the meantime, at least, if you need to reset Tom's password, you can come in here and, and do that or something, or Doug's or whoever's, yeah. Yep. But yeah, that, that just applies to Montana, that's correct. Um, in addition, you can assign the job functions from here as well. So if it's easier to come in and uh, find the user and then assign them to the job function, that way you can do that as well. Okay. And then basically you click the Save button and, uh, and of course, that'll save the changes as well. Okay. Um, and then moving down to the monitoring piece, this is probably uh, where uh, I would say most of the work or most of the training uh, is really uh, going to be beneficial, I guess. The instance overview and the steps overview are very helpful. The the instance overview um, only gives you an, an overview by instance number. So, for example, here you'll see 867, 866, and so on. And if you click on these, you'll see um, kind of the, the history of where they're at. So right now this one is just sitting there at the uh, the AP step. Um, if we scroll down here a little bit here too, maybe we can find a different one. So this one went from AP to the parallel to the manager approval and was assigned to uh, uh, Cameron here. So this gives you a view of that, um, but it's kind of just more of like a read-only view. So um, when you need to cancel instances and that type of thing, you want to use the steps overview because that breaks it down by the actual steps within each instance. And um, so I would say, 99.9% .9 of the time, you're probably going to go to the steps overview because what you have the ability to do then is see each of the steps for each instance, plus you can take an action with it. So, um, Melissa, uh, who was it? Uh, I think, Melissa, maybe you sent me this one. Maybe it was Cheryl. I can't remember. But um, there was this instance 831 that she wanted uh, me to cancel. So, if again, you have the filter here that you can click on and expand it. And uh, if you plug in an instance number here, then you can activate that filter, and it'll take you to just that instance, and then it'll show you all of the steps for that instance. Okay, so um, we'll go to uh, 838 here, but like this one, for example, I, um, it was like, can you cancel this one? So you just check it, and, and you'll see here, this little arrow means this is the active step. So if there's a bunch of different steps here, if it's a check mark, that means it's been completed. But if it's got an arrow, that means that's the active step. Okay. So with an active step, you have the ability to reassign it to someone, to cancel it or abort it, or you can change the completion time. But um, that typically doesn't um, uh, make a huge difference. But like if you wanted to add some additional time to make it not overdue, you could do that. Um, and then I, just as a rule of thumb, I typically don't delete them. I just usually abort them or cancel them because then you still have a history of them. Okay. So if, for example, um, it went to a manager and for whatever reason you wanted to reassign it yourself to a different manager, you can select that, you know, that step and, and click on assignment and it'll just ask you, okay, who do you want to send this to? And you can, you know, just start typing in that uh, that person's um, name and select them, and then you have to add a comment like uh, rerouting based on Paula's 
request or, you know, whatever you want to do. You just have to add some type of comment. But then I would assign this specifically to Paula. Okay. Uh, or if we do an abort, it'll just totally cancel that step, which this one was one that we wanted to do. So if you abort it, then it just stops that process uh, or that instance where it's at and kind of acts like just kind of like you completed it basically. So if we check this and we say abort step, then it uh, it goes ahead and, and uh, aborts that and it turns it green just like as if it had been completed, but it's stopped right there in its tracks. It looks like uh, I need to refresh there. Abort. And then you can see it turns green, but instead of a check mark, you can see it puts a little X here so you know that it was actually aborted um, and that uh, that history um, is visible as well. Um, so you can see that I canceled this on uh, at this date and time and so on. Okay. Okay. Now, if you want to reactivate something, so if you act, and this is why I always use just use the abort, is uh, if you want to reactivate something, once you just check it, and you can reactivate that very easily as well. And so it puts it right back where it was. But you can't do that if you deleted it. If you delete it, yeah, then it purges it. So my my best practice is is to to just cancel. Unless you really, really want to delete it, you certainly can. But uh, most of the time, I just abort it, and that way, it's still in the system. It's it's just a, uh, you know, there's a, there's a, I guess, an audit trail. Right. Okay. So again, uh, this one was supposed to be deleted, so I'm going to go ahead uh, or canceled, I should say. So I'm going to abort that one. Um, now there was another one that um, I wanted to show here. So instance 838 was one that uh, Polly had sent me. Um, and so here you can see in the steps overview, this is where you can see the breakdown of, of everything that's happened. And again, because it breaks it down by step, you can actually take, a, you know, you can say, I want to do this with this step. So let's say, for example, um, in this case, Polly called me and she said, um, I want you to, um, I want to start this one over back at step one, right? So rather than just reactivate the step, I, I need to cancel this this instance. So I would check this and say abort this step, which would turn everything green because at that point it's been, you know, essentially completed or, or canceled. But then I would come back to this one and I would say I want to reactivate this. And so the, the reason I bring this up is because if you reactivate this step and you have step nine here reactive as well and you don't cancel it, then you're going to have two of this instance out there in the field. So I, I don't anticipate this will happen extremely often, but uh, you can uh, you can probably understand that um, if we if we have part of this instance active at step nine and we react, reactivate step one, there's going to be two uh, duplicates of this out in the in the field there. So you just want to be aware if, if you need to go back in time and reactivate a step, just to make sure that you you do abort that active step. Uh, or that currently active step before you uh, reactivate, uh, you know, a previous step. So does that make sense? I was going to say, not to me. So if you go down, so like at that last step, if you, so, yeah, say that, okay, if you go down and board it down below, Mm -hmm. Then if you come back up, does it abort? It doesn't abort all the steps. It aborts all the steps, but then if you reactivate it, say at the step at the second line, you got two mm -hmm. out there. So you no. you only want to abort it once at one point. What I I yeah I missed it. Okay, so so let let no that's this is good because this is uh. I want to make sure this is this is clear. So, so here you can see the history, right? So this one came in for uh, mountain boiler and steam, and uh, it, you know, it went. Polly took it and she assigned it to Tracy, so she routed it to Tracy, and then after that it, it came to Todd, and then Todd, it looks like wanted to route it to Polly, right? So right now it's sitting, uh, waiting for Polly to do something with it, right? Okay. Right. Okay. So. If Polly, for example, said we want to reactivate 
step one and we just want to start this over or, or maybe we want to go back to the Tracy step. If I just reactivate this one, then we're going to have step three active and step nine active and they're both, going, it's going to be a duplicate because we've got the same instance 838 at step nine active and at step three active. So if Polly says, I want to go back to step three, you want to abort this one before you reactivate this one. Okay, so if you abort this one, mm -hmm. so you do that, and then do you stay, save it or anything? No, so I, I select abort, right, and now it, it turns everything green because it's okay. saying, okay, okay, nothing's going on. Because what's going to happen is, it, well, let's just play this out for a second. Because what's going to happen is if I reactivate Tracy, then it's going to end up going through the same process, right? So we've already got one spin off of it here, and then it's going to start here and go through it all again. And so we're actually going to have two step nines if we don't cancel this first or abort this one first. So now I would come back and reactivate this step, and uh, it would go back to Tracy in, in this case, and then it would go through the process again, but we wouldn't have two step nines. Right? It would. It would just. We're, we're going to cancel where it's at right now, and we're going to go back in time and say reactivate step three, and it's going to go through those same steps again. Okay. So I'm going to reactivate this one because that one should be good. But it, it's. Um, if you think about it, I'm trying to think of a good way. I don't think I'm explaining it very well, but. Uh, but if you if you think about it, if you have an instance in time in process and it's active, and you go back and reactivate a previous step, it's going to go through the same process. But you've already got a step nine out there, so step three is going to go to step four, step five, step six, step seven, and eventually step nine, and you're going to have two of the same thing at step nine. So it just cancel the one with the check mark, or without the check mark. The one with the arrow. Great. So if you if you come across that scenario, you know we can definitely connect uh, quickly or run through it again if you want to. But um, once you do it a few times, I think it'll make sense. But basically, the rule of thumb is, if you need to reactivate a previous step, you just want to abort any active steps. So if if again, if Polly said the instance 838, we need to take it back to step three. Just you, you would come filter for instance 838, and you would just want to um, abort any active steps, which is again this one with the arrow, and then you know it would all turn green like we saw, and then you would reactivate the step that you that you wanted to. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Have a good week. Oh yeah. yeah. Have a good week. You're on vacation. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> okay. So um, lastly, you know, so we talked about the reassignment, which is pretty straightforward. Um, aborting, which is pretty straightforward, and then reactivate. Um, and that scenario where if it's something that you're going to go back in time uh, or to a previous step, just to make sure that you you abort any any active steps. Um, up here in the filter, uh, I, you guys, I think, are probably, I know, have been using this, it sounds like, but um, you can do a number of different things, which is nice. So you can filter by job function, username, or initiator, um, which the initiators will all be the same. But, like, for example, if, if we clear out instance, we can, you know, filter by a particular step. So if we only want to see step nines, anything that's at step nine, we can do that. If you want to filter for just anything that's active or things that are completed or postponed or... Um, you know, anything that's been, you know, that's had a request question, you know, you can do that as well. Um, so you can filter by status, which is helpful. Um, so you can see here, this is all of the, uh, the uh, request steps that have happened. Um, in addition to that, you can do it by in date or out date. So, of course, the in date is when it comes into that person and the out date is when it went out from that person. So if we wanted to see, for example, anything that had been completed uh, for today, we could very simply say, I want to see that. And if you want to take it further and say anything that, uh, you know, um, at the station accountant review step got completed today, you could do that. So we have the, the outdate ranges. Um, 
end date ranges, um, and you can see some of these have gone through the entire process, so they're green, and some of them have just gone through past Todd, but are still um, not the entire process isn't completed. So you can, uh, you know, filter by that end date, out date, step number, instance number, um, status of the step. Um, in addition to that, you can do it by the summary, and for the summary, you just use that wildcard. If you remember, like we talked about, so if you wanted to look for Moon Security Service, for example, you could do asterisk Moon, you know, asterisk or even Moon uh, Security asterisk like that, for example. And you know, maybe I want to clear out all of these. And I just want to search for anything with uh, Moon Security in the in the summary um, and activate that filter. Now we can see all of those. So even in the context of, um, you know, the dollar amount, the vendor name, the uh, invoice date, um, the dollar amount, again, or um, the posting month, uh, we can, um, you can filter in there and, and find that thing, or even by the job function that it got assigned to. So, um, you know, the, the AP group or particular user, we could see, you know, anything that's active right now that's assigned to uh, Polly, for example, right? In that text search, is, in the text search, is it absolute without the wildcards? Yes. It is. Okay. Yes. So if I if you did it like this, for example, it would say anything that began with Moon Security, but because Moon Security is after ninety five fifty in this pipe, um, this would not pull back Moon Security. So this is more of like a contextual search like that. Okay, so if you remove the wild cards, it wouldn't find anything. Correct. Correct. Okay, that's one to remember. Because you'll have people, I can't find it. You gotta have those wild cards. Yeah, the wild card is definitely critical, yeah. Nobody else, but yeah. No, okay. Well, then I put it in there completed by two. Because if it's the same case, but if they go to the completed. For the yeah. filter, right, right, right. It's the same case. Mm -hmm. Right. But we're okay. under. Right. But under here, but it's the same case. Right, right, right. right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's, yeah. yeah. That's good to know. I don't mm -hmm. think they've gotten really to the search yet. I mean, they're just, just starting yeah. to yeah. approve. But somebody will forget. Mm -hmm. it. Right. Right. But this is, you know, this is really helpful. And again, you guys have kind of gotten the handle of using the instance number, which makes, you know, this piece of it very easy. But in those scenarios where maybe they don't remember the instance number, you know, if you know that it was Moon Security and you know that, you know, let's say Polly says, oh, I accidentally approved one for Moon Security, uh, you can come in here and, you know, through this filter, be able to track it back to, you know, which one you're looking for. And then if you're like, okay, so it must be instance 728. So now you can, you know, go back here and say, okay, it's instance 728, and we clear out all this stuff. And um, now I uh, activate that filter, and now I can see everything for instance 728, and we see, okay, that's the one that Polly was talking about. So just being able to use that filter, you know, I found it very helpful, and I'm sure you guys will too, to be able to track that down. Again, instance number, once people get used to the system, that becomes the ultimate tracking number, and I think people, um, you know, once they're used to the system, will remember that or use that number, but uh, in the meantime, if if that if the instance number is not available for some reason, at least you can get in there and, and uh, again, you know, like by vendor name here, like we did, or, or uh, the user, or, you know, when it came in or went out of the system, that kind of thing. Okay. So, um, so that that's basically what I wanted to cover there. So, um, do you guys have any questions? My part's pretty easy. It's their parts that are pretty confusing. Well, I think our parts are pretty easy, really. Jocular or job router? Jocular. I have no idea. Did he, did he use the password you gave him? 
The passwords we create for those users, those apply to job writer and Docuer, correct? Correct. For, for the Montana folks, yeah. I sent the credentials out, right? I'll test it with his username. If it works for me, it'll work for me. And saying I can't get in means a whole host of things. He might not be using Chrome or Firefox. I'll, he might. I'll, Did we ask him about that? I'll, I'll no. test his account. And then we'll, we'll go from there. Because I saw him in there. You know, I mean, he was in there. Right. Well, he's right. not in the job router. Well, that means his account works. I know. So what's he doing? I don't know. Okay, well, I think this helps a lot and gives us some um, things to go on. We just need to.